You know what I didn't check right before stream? The mics. Hi, welcome to Ways of Old. We'll be doing, doing quick mic corrections during intros because I'm a fool. Um, I am your, uh, your, your game master, uh, Gilbert Ramos, uh, and this is Ways of Old. Uh, the only announcement I have is the uh, update for Titan Rising, which I will throw in the chat for the link. Uh, it is a Scion source book, basically Titanomarchy Part 2, <clears throat> uh, where you get more access to Titanic, Titanic uh, powers, pantheons, all that good stuff for your Scion games, for your Scion 2nd Edition games. Uh, and I helped write this one, so there's I, I know what's in there already. I know it's good shit. I can speak to, uh, speak to experience that it is good shit, and um, I got to work along amazing people, and you should support them. It's currently fully funded, but they are about 2k under their next stretch goal, which is an addition, uh, additional adventure at the heroic tier for Titanic Scions, um, specifically geared toward those of us who are not uh, children of gods, those of us who have taken a different path and uh, chosen to be, you know, sons and daughters of Cronus or, you know, uh, children of Gaia, things like that. Um, yeah, go check it out. Click the link. It's really good. It's really fucking good. Um, that's the only announcement I have for today, um, so let's, let's not dilly-dally and let's go ahead and jump in and meet our heroes, shall we? Hey, I'm Luna, or Jurid by Night, and today I will be, I will be playing Cersei Aveline, the Sorceress. Wow. Hate it here. Well, we are streaming, so I mean, that is a thing, so, oh. you know. It's, it's saved. Hello, everybody. I am the Azure Butterfly, or Azure for short, or simply Rachel, uh, Faye Butterfly on the internet. You can find me over at theazurebutterfly.ttv and all the social medias at theazurebutter1. Tonight, I am playing Ingrid the Ingrid, Ingrid of Sintra the Bear Witcher. See, I even, I even fucked up my own intro. <laughs> uh, the great thing about the internet is uh, every mistake you make on camera is there for forever, so try not to think about that. Uh, as well, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and bully our friends uh, as well because uh, I'll have you all know that Cersei, learning that it was still the night that we we're picking up the same night, uh, stopped everything and went to go rechange into the same dress so c canon can be complete. So uh, I care about continuity; it's very important. Yes, uh, unlike most showrunners and like television, actual television shows. So are you coming at me for not wearing the exact same thing that I wore that day? Oh, conflict no. within within our heroes will tear themselves apart. Um, <laughs> excellent. Uh, let's jump into today's episode of Ways of Old. And we begin, as we always do, with a recap. Ingrid, please. Jesus Christ, the last session uh, introduced something that I was not prepared for at all. And that was dialogue conflict. That was quite a lot of fun. We did start the episode still having the wine with Aurelia, Cersei, and Ingrid in Aurelia's office. Talking about some of Cersei's past. Or trying to, at the very least. Uh, before we ended up moving uh, to the... It was the dining room, like just the dining room, right? There was no fancy name, like the Hall of Hope or anything like that for that. Storytelling. The, uh, the, you're talking about the hall? No, I'm just saying like, there's no fancy name for where we ate, right? It was just no, the dining no. room. The, right? uh, no, just a dining facility. Dining room, okay. I should say. We went to a dining room, which was, um, separated to keep novices and uh, graduated sorceresses and staff and important guests on separate tables. It was a very unique situation for Ingrid to find. Um, sat across from uh, Cersei and Aurelia, right next to Sabrina. <laughs> I swear to God, I was really hoping that seduction was going to go through. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. But yes, a lot of dialogue conflict happened, especially when Stregobor decided to uh, open his mouth. Um, uh, a lot of conversation happened. Um, 
Wow, I'm already forgetting immediately what the act, what what a lot of the actual conversations were You're about. I just great. remember, I just remember Strega. My, my notes say Stregabor was an asshole the fair. entire night. Entirely fair. <laughs> um, yeah, Stregabor was an asshole the entire night to the point where I think even Sabrina was like happy that Ingrid, uh, kind of like was just like, "Why are you being an ass?" <laughs> like trying to. Uh, step up uh, against him a little bit. While Cersei, being the actual voice of the party, tried her best to quell the converse, to, to, to quell the turmoil happening at the table, try to use her her sorceress expertise to quite quite a good result. Uh, from what I'm remembering of that, uh, to kind of let things go uh, to where Stregobor eventually left. In a huff, and uh, Istrid followed behind. Before, um, and then uh, there was a little bit of a brief conversation between Ingrid, Cersei, and the rest of the sorceresses gathered before Ingrid had to leave because Cersei got inducted fully into the lodge of sorceresses that night. Yeah, she's part of a cult. Let's see how this goes. Club. All right, it's club. C words, it's fine. <laughs> them, them, club, cult, same thing. Excellent. Uh, as always, just a quick housekeeping reminder that your luck is refilled at the beginning of every session. So go ahead and annotate that, lest we all forget. But not our resolve, which I should note that my resolve is currently eleven out of forty because of <laughs> the damage that I took. I'm sure that everything will be fine. Cersei. Yes. We begin with you. We left on a very momentous occasion. The vote had already been cast. You had sworn your oath. Now conversation begins anew. Margarita speaks up and says... I've taken the liberty of sharing the majority of what you've told me so far. But I'm sure others might have questions. She looks around the room. I bet it's Sabrina. The women's eyes are fixed on you. You can see there's a sort of unspoken inquisition here. They wish to know. I'd like you to make a roll, actually, before anything. Okay. What do you want me to roll? Human perception, please. Math. 22. 22. They're eager to hear your turn of events. They, uh... seem to have gotten the bare bones, but they are hungry for details. Um... Anything that anybody wants to know, I'm happy to oblige. Kara is the first to speak. The moment your the last syllable leaves your lips, she speaks up and says, Who exactly is this Renwick? And how is he capable of... Is he even capable of the magics he's chasing? Well, he has sorcerers on his side. We dispatched a... A higher vampire who was who did seem capable of magic, some creating a portal that the wild hunt could cross through it. But if Renwick is capable, I don't know. I assume not, since he has sorcerers in his league. A seer speaks up and says. 
none of ours, though. Just these sorcerers. Do we have any documentation on them? Are they from Banard? Are they from Nilfgaard? Where are they from? Could I think back to this loser? And, I don't know, Peg? Anything. Wait, yes, dress I will the way allow you a, uh, a retroactive... Uh, a retroactive role here. Um, let's call this intelligence deduction. Oh shit, my deduction's one. You do have a look. This is like a flashback mechanic. <laughs> oh fuck, that. No. Um, 16. 16. Um, none of his mannerisms, even the way... So, let's be honest, alright? Banard is an inferior school to Aratuza. Aratuza is a beacon, a mecca of, of magical influence. Uh, even the, uh, even the Sorcerer of Glycen Hall are arguably inferior I think Gweisenholm might be the only one that may be able to even touch Aratuza's greatness. But even this... Even Bannard produces better sorcerers than this gentleman. Uh, the way he floundered, the, the lack of uh, response, the, mm, the lack of forethought on his part when he was fumbling through his pages, fumbling through his books, he's likely just a hedge mage. Just a single practitioner taught by perhaps a lone outsider, perhaps even assigned uh, to a sorcerer under Renwick's employ. Well, I thought, I thought, I thought Cersei was just being, you know, about about him being a loser. But Jesus Christ, he really is no, a loser. I know how to, I can read vibes. <laughs> <laughs> the vibe, the vibe. He did not pass the vibe check. <laughs> well. The uh, human sorcerer that uh, that follows Renwick is not skilled enough to, to be from any notable school, it would seem. Very easily, I very easily worked around his protections and whatnot. You can see a, not a look of calm, but a look of... There's less concern than there was. And Sheila's the one to almost clarify it. She says, then we are only worried about practitioners, single hedge mages. Nothing of import. Why are we worried? Well, <laughs> having seen and starts to get a little little Farsighted, taught thinking back at, at the party. Think having encountered this his, this group in person in the flesh, they should be worried. Sabrina speaks up and says. Margarita said that these are creatures, not humans. These are these are vampiric creatures. But sorcerers are under their employ. Yeah. With all due respect, and she turns now to Margarita. This is not our this is not our duty. Slaying monsters and vanquishing demons is not why we formed this sisterhood. This is a job for witchers. Margarita nods and says, That's my initial thought as well. But Cersei, you were there. You were there to assess the threat. How 
how involved do you believe we should be? Can the Witcher schools, whatever remains of them, handle this? Four Witchers at this party. And as far as I'm concerned, none of the vampires were dispatched. As far as I know, rather. One Witcher, my friend, was on the brink of death when we escaped. The sphere speaks up and says, But this was during the Nilf Guardian attack. Surely without such a distraction, they could handle these creatures. This is their job. Perhaps. That would be the hope. However, Renwick poses a threat to all of us, including the Sisterhood. Kira speaks and says, in what way? Because he wants to either eradicate or enslave everybody who he feels is inferior to him. Through a myth, through a fairy tale. Whatever he's letting out of whatever portal, should the should these hedge mages even be able to accomplish this feat? I'm not one to just believe in fairy tales, are you? I was there. I dispelled the portal that was going to allow the wild hunt through. Are you sure? I promise. Margarita looks to uh, to this group. At the very least, we should put a contract. An open contract to the Witchers. Seriously, if what you say is true, then fighting them collectively is not an option. Isolating them one by one seems to be the best hope. Would you not agree? I do. This Renwick. Do we know how he came to know of these things? This book, these magics. The sorcerer who we killed, who is attempting this mat this portal, had a grimoire. That's been passed down between, passed between many hands. But I don't know where it's, where it originates from. Kira speaks. And where is this book now? Storyteller, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Luna doesn't remember. Did Aurelia tell her to, that she should keep the book a secret? Aurelia definitely told you uh, that... The book's location should not be revealed. Seems Margarita has already let them know about a, a grimoire by the slip of the tongue of saying that there was a book involved. Um, Aurelia warned you to tell as few people as possible. I'll look. I'll glance at Aurelia. And then continue. I don't know. It was lost after the battle. She continues. This, that should be our primary concern then. The location of this book is paramount. That is why the Sisterhood was created. That is why the Lodge of Sorcerers exists to protect magic, to act in the interest of chaos. If that tome can be recovered, our safety is assured. Aurelia finally speaks up and says, 
the book should be recovered, yes, but it doesn't solve the issue. A copy could have been made. A pages can be re-scrawled. Edits can be created. And besides, recovering the book puts a target on our back. If we were to bring it here, and Renwick was to find out, then surely his vampires would follow us to Aratusa. We would be hunted across the continent by an immortal being untouched by time. Someone who does not waver, someone who does not tire, someone who does not sleep. Margarita like cult members. The hydrate redeem and then immediately God. Hey, you don't you, you see a hyd you hydrate. see a redeem, you do it. The redeem. Also hello Thank chow you. me out. Thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> that was that was in tandem. Everyone was outstanding. Um Margarita speaks up and says <clears throat> The book is of concern, and we will keep an eye out for it. The primary concern is the man who wishes to use it. I propose that we place a contract, an open contract to all witchers. And we should scatter. We should spread ourselves. A skeleton crew at Aratusa. That way we may continue our teachings, continue our duties. But it's high time we returned and spread out once more amongst the world. Spreading these contracts, meeting with witchers, what few remain, any mercenaries, monster hunters, anyone who will take the task. Tell them nothing of the full nature, the full scope of the threat. But just make sure that they're prepared. There's a collective cacophony of agreement. Cersei is just kind of looking down, fidgeting a little, thinking about this comp everything that's just been said, and also about what she knows about Renwick and his um, cult. Understood. Good pass information. You are able to let them know the, the scope of this. Uh, I won't ask you to recount everything, uh, and I won't ask you to even really to even really let us know what you tell them. Just simply, what do you obscure? So, for now, the, the, the fact that I have the book and and Elodie. Understood. Oh, I would You're like talking about Elodie? Uh, obscuring about these two things. Oh. I okay. would like you to make a deception roll. Empathy and deceit, please. You are amongst a group of women who are used to hiding the truth and speaking in half truths. What's your deception level, Luna? Four. Oh, okay. Respectable. <laughs> Luck in this. Come on, explode, explode, explode. Oh, God. Oh, I wish. I feel like the DC for this is oh, excellent. Manifested. Nineteen plus eight. Twenty-seven. 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 Thank you. Well done. <clears throat> the women don't question. They don't seem to pry or push any further than you would like, and. Every now 
and then you can see during your explanation you glance over at Aurelia and there's a small smirk, just the slightest hint of a curl at her right lip. Is there any other action that needs to be taken, Cersei? Mm. Not that I can think of. I'm just allowing them to ask their questions. Well, this question is posed to you by Margarita. The plan current plan of action for Lodge Sorceress is, is to scatter and spread the contracts. Is there anything else you recommend that they do? Definitely. It is better to take them on in in group of one, maybe two at a time. Some of some in his group are mortal. Um and if I'd, I'd have described what Renwick look like, looks like. And if you see him, Renwick, that is not a task for a single witcher or sorceress or monster hunter. I got this. Okay. <laughs> Sabrina speaks up and says, What of the witcher you travel with? I'm assuming the two of you will be hunting as well. Yes. Sheila chimes in and says, What of Stregobor? Such high movement will certainly pull his attention back here. He's already sniffing at our heels. The answer is simple. We kill the Stregobor. <laughs> Aurelia speaks up. I will deal with Stregobor. No one questions further. Margarita gives a final edict and says, We all have our tasks. Cersei, as usual, you are welcome to stay for as long as you like. There are tasks to be completed. Absolutely. I will reach out and begin to investigate where this sorcerer you encountered came from. Whoever held the book last, and of course, this new, this new hedge mage. I wish to know where Renwick is finding his magical practitioners. Craigslist. I'm sorry. Meeting adjourned. One by one, the women rise, finishing off wine. Giving you a smile, Cersei, as they pass and leave the room. A silent welcome. Cersei is equal parts, what's the word, honored and elated, but also very scared. Scream giggles. Yes. Where do you go now, Cersei? I would um, look to Aurelia and and ask if I could speak with her privately. Of course. Two of you return to our chambers. We fade from this for now. During the time that this meeting was going on, this discussion was happening, Ingrid. 
you had asked about a training room, a place to practice, a place to run drill and mm, keep on your feet. Correct. A place to that could withstand uh, some intense magics. You find it. As the instructions were given by the lodge. I think they're just a group of cool ladies. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> it is empty. It is made largely just of stone. There are mm, pillars and dummies set up. But nothing really... Nothing like Kernadok. There's no obstacle course. There's no full targets. Just an empty room. Large and stone. No dummies at all. No. There are wooden nothing. pillars and things of that nature, but nothing. No straw men holding swords. Hmm. Definitely not here in Kaduk, no. It could be worse, though. But I would say Ingrid's going to walk in, start doing some stretches, the usual spiel one does before doing some uh, heavy work and work, working out, even if it's uh, involving some magic as well. She's going to probably stand in front of the wooden pillars, close her eyes for a moment, get her into the zone. And I would say the the image sorry, give me one second. Hmm. I am so sorry I choked there for a second. <laughs> um the image that comes to mind um as soon as she closes her eyes is fire. The room at the ball ablaze. Renwick standing before her. Nioka on his knees downed. And she's going to grit her teeth. And then with all her energy as she can muster, she's going to channel and cast um, Igni at the pillars in front of her. You do this. How much stamina do you expend? Even in training, you're just going to make me spit. <laughs> stamina? Heard. Okay. I am. Uh, since she knows this is an actual combat and she doesn't want to over exert herself too much in that moment, I'll say she will expend two stamina. Excellent. You do this. The wooden pillar is burned, blackened, and now brittle. Not enough. It's not nearly enough that she could be doing. She casts again. And again. And again. One stamina each, three times. Crumbles. Into ash. You can hear the... crackle of wood burning. It's a small fire near your feet now. Nothing detrimental, nothing terrifying, just burning. Flames already beginning to fade and die. Uh, 
smelling the fire, the burnt wood, seeing the now ashen pillar for her. She's going to grit her teeth and hiss again. It's just not enough. She's going to let out a scream, and then this time, with both hands, as hard as she as as hard as she can channel, she is now trying to she is now trying to overexert herself, to push herself to her limit. She's gonna, with the safety of this room, she's now gonna see just how powerful her Igni can be. Meaning, I'm going to look at my limit for Vigor, and I'm going to expend the entire four stamina that I'm capable of in that moment. Do you wish to overexert yourself truly, Ingrid? Remind the player what through overexertion <clears throat> costs. For every one point of stamina above your Vigor threshold, you must spend five HP. When you <clears throat> overexert yourself, you will roll on the elemental fumble effect table. Sure, I'm going to overextend myself and at the cost of 10 HP. So by two. Two points. Yep. Make, making making the vigor the vigor total cost uh, six. Understood. You do this. We'll have the results of your overexertion very shortly. I didn't notice the 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 initiates hanging out in the corner there apparently and now they're singed to do oops <laughs> the element of igni is of course fire we must roll an elemental fumble This is exciting. At least we're in a safe environment. Safe indeed. <laughs> oh, this would be a perfect moment for Stregobor to come see what the what the what the what the what the fire blasts were about. <laughs> Do me a favor. Rather than me rolling this, I'd like you to roll. Uh, Igni uh, requires you to. What does Igni require you to roll? It's just an expenditure of stamina, and it's a technically an attack, correct? Yes, it is. I have it up right here. Igni throws out a wave of sparks, which a fi uh, sparks and fire, which deal deals one d six damage per stamina point spent, and has a fifty percent chance of lighting anything it hits on fire. Always deals damage to the torso unless at a point blank uh, unless used at a point blank range. Um, when used at a point blank range, Igni can be aimed at body locations. Duration immediate, cost variable, type spell. Uh, yeah, that's all it says. Defense is dodge or block, but I doubt the what the char the 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 ash cannot dodge. No. Uh so for this specifically um given that it is at a uh, uh, a wooden pillar, a sort of dummy as as it was There's no roll necessary. You're going to take... You 
keep this simple because it's uh so for your guys' for your guys' uh, uh knowledge of the mechanics of this it would be rolling a fumble and seeing by how much uh the the fumble is done by. And then for the elemental fumble effect, body burst into flames, you take one point of damage for every point you fumbled by and are also set on fire. So uh with this, instead of uh having to calculate how much you would possibly miss by a wooden pillar, a dummy as it were, you're going to take <clears throat> two points of damage because it's just based off of the two that you exerted. And mm -hmm. you are also now on fire. Your arms are burning. <laughs> She's tense, gritting in pain. What was he like? In that split second, she's not worried about the fire. That's just spread it on her arm. She's wondering about the intensity of what she just did. How damaged is uh, the pillar? You have but a moment to assess. Give me an awareness roll. Things are happening. Okay, that is... Okay, I'm rolling the d10 first. Eight plus awareness is six. Nine, ten, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen plus intelligence is fifty. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. It's practically gone. It's it's not but ash on the floor. There's no there's nothing yet even left to hold flame and uh, hold on to whatever fire might be left. It's you can't burn ash not without a, a uh, an accelerant. Uh, but this is not the in this brief moment you you can assess this. It's practically gone. Then somebody runs up next to you and begins to pat you out your arms are being uh, uh well beaten out of fear <clears throat> uh quickly in this uh you can assess that it is istrid he has removed uh what looks like his the vest that the vest or the overgarment that he wore for dinner um kind of tearing at his own shirt and has begun to uh try to smother the flames that are now that were creeping up on your arms i would say it's in that moment that she actually obviously finally noticed that she herself had uh caught on fire um how she's looking down at her arms now at Ist as istrid uh puts her out how bad does it look how bad does it feel given you that say? you were um Given that you were at dinner and there was no armor or anything to to absorb any of this, and there was no there was no real uh, block from this, pretty bad. Uh, you your fingers are blackened, and the flesh was already beginning to melt. It was it was dangerous. It hurts. It hurts, but she's also going to think back to, in that moment, it still wouldn't have been enough. She blinks, and she sees Renwick smiling at her. Blinks again as Istrid is patting her out and sees armless Nyoka on the ground, blinks again. This time seeing something that didn't happen. Cersei engulfed and taken over as well. And she cries. She says it wouldn't have been enough and she collapses to her knees while he's doing that. Mr. is speaking calling something out but you don't hear him. And you hear muffled words and as you cry as you fall and he holds your arms 
and then you, as you cry, he takes your head, standing still, and pulls you close to his chest. He's still speaking, but it's muffled still, as if he's underwater. It is this moment. Not even... Honestly, I don't even think she cares who it is. It's the fact that she feels that wave finally crashing down like this entire time, even while they were in the village before she had purpose, she had stuff to keep her occupied, keep her mind occupied, even, you know, taking care of Nyoka before he left helping Cersei get her sh her her new wagon shop set up helping someone anyone was all of that while wanting the best for her friends was also an attempt to stave off the feeling of loss the feeling of helplessness the fe like just the stress the tension and the helplessness that she had been feeling. It's crashing into her all at once, and she's just soaking into it in that moment and feeling that feeling of being held. She's just going to let go and continue. She's, she's utterly gone in that moment. I would say throughout her cries, she's probably going to mumble along the lines of, again, it wouldn't have been enough. I couldn't save anybody. I failed him again. I can't stop him. We fade from this. <clears throat> to you, Cersei. You are with Aurelia now in her quarters. Oh, the music shift. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know it's late. By all means. I've had my fill of wine. I feel like I'm open to anything at this point. <laughs> he, Cersei, laughs and kind of forgets all that fear for a, a, the briefest moment. And then it all comes back. <sighs> I'm afraid. Of what, dear? I don't, I don't know how anybody could stop him. I wasn't going to tell us, tell everybody that we're all doomed and there's nothing we could do. But at the same time, I don't want anybody else to experience what I did. Oh dear. You went in underprepared, whether you knew it or not. But now you have Aratusa. And we'll scatter across this continent and alert every witcher, mercenary, monster slayer, wayward soldier, every cutthroat who's looking for a coin in their purse. You're no longer alone. The world will hunt him now. And too proper as well. If the world needs saving, the world should damn well play a part. That's very true. I've never heard that. <laughs> 
heard it like that before. You've lived as long as I have, dear. You see that the world is long, far too much relied on heroes and singular individuals. No shining knight is going to come save us. No powerful magician is going to emerge from a cloud and rescue us from the dragons. No, we are all together fighting. Some of us just more than others. I also feel kind of dirty lying after I had just been inducted. I understand your distaste. But if it makes you feel any better. Not everyone is. Everyone in that room is lying about something. Their involvement, their allegiances, how dedicated they are to the cause. It's a step in the right direction, but it is far from perfection, dear. makes sense what are you going to do are you going to go out or stay here I imagine I will take this opportunity to stretch my legs it's a perfect excuse to see the road a bit I have really? some friends in high places still or at least their grandchildren are still in high places. We'll see if they remember. Perfect. I hey. may actually mm -hmm. do some investigation of my own. If there is a war with Nilfgaard, as much as I hate to agree, Stregobor may have been onto something, though he may not know it. It's a very strange coincidence that Nilfgaard made it that far into the into the country, being attacked by Zima without being anyone being alerted. Right as your vampires were attacking. I'm going to reach out to a contact at Gwyson Hall take a visit to Nilfgaard and see exactly what the mages that they produce know. I would ask if that was safe, but I feel like it wouldn't matter. Oh, trust me, the woman I'm meeting is perfectly harmless. No, oh, no, I have no doubt. Besides, we're... We are Artusa. We are above politics and princes and countries at this point. The world seems to accept, have accepted that. Very true. That is the one advantage we hold, if nothing else. No one cares about the neutral parties. They just want... They want the enemies. And if time does come that they demand us to choose a side we choose our Atuza. absolutely well I don't want to keep you I think I'm going to retire for the evening get some rest Cersei perhaps before we leave we can continue a few lessons or two. You've advanced incredibly, I would imagine. I'd love to see where your current state is. I would love that. Just let me know. She gives a smile and then opens the door for you, kissing you on the cheek and bidding you farewell for the evening. Cersei will um, accept and smile back, say goodnight. And as she's walking to where she's 
sleeping her room. You want to interrupt that thought? Yes. You exit and begin to walk toward where your room is. At the end of a hall, you can make out a single lone figure, clad in heavy robes. There is no smile on his face. There is judgment in his eyes. Looks Dragobor is watching. I think at that, um, Cersei would just... Shoulders back, head held high. Attempt to just walk past him with a simple good night. Quite the strange occurrence, Miss Aveline. What do you mean? How was the rest of your dinner? Interesting things to discuss, I imagine, being gone for so long. Oh, many adventures. Forgive me, you must be tired. Perhaps we can talk and walk. I can walk you to your quarters. Lovely. He extends his arm. Take it. It's polite. <laughs> what does his arm feel like? Does it feel like bones? Riddle. <laughs> does it feel like does it feel like if she squeezes just a little too hard it's gonna snap like a kick at that man is over 400 years old <laughs> uh, allegedly Cersei uh <laughs> he's walking with you indeed escorting you to your quarters you kind of have to guide him um but he's unless you would like to make a roll he's setting the pace yeah, this is slow as fuck oh it's like game of thrones level like walking politics <gasps> walking in the gardens what were you you're walking in the gardens with stregobor luna <laughs> lucky me <laughs> These are like toe to heel steps. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you'd like to make a roll to kind of quicken his pace a bit, you may. What would that be? It's well, wizard time, motherfucker. Uh, it depends on how, how you want to go about this. Do you want to be overtly obvious about this? Do you want to manhandle him and like strength this? Or do you want to kind of like make this a little more subtle? How do you want to go about this? And we can decide together. I bet um, you could manhandle him. I bet your strength score is higher than his. <clears throat> what is my strength? My I... How tall is Dragobor? Tall? That's an excellent question. <laughs> but I uh, certainly You should. don't know Storyteller? <laughs> you think <laughs> this book has how tall he is? <laughs> how, much, how, how, how much in stone does he weigh? Oh my god. Um... <laughs> I think she would, man, I would say, like, persuasion, like, yes, I'm so tired, like, oh, I'm gonna pass out, but he won't care. <laughs> um. I feel like he goes slower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna accept it. You're gonna accept it? I'm just gonna accept it. Excellent. Then you walk uh, at the GOT politics pace. <laughs> arm, uh, taking Striker Boy's arm, you walk. I understand you've been operating a shop sort yes. of on your own. Oh, I was. Forgive me, I should apologize for my behavior at dinner. Oh. Um. 
It's just that your compatriots are vexing, if I'm going to be honest. I've traveled all this way. And they seem content to uh, leave me out to dry for a lot of what I'm hoping to achieve. Hoping to achieve, sir. I am in pursuit of truth, Miss Aveline. Oh, aren't we all? You're in perfect tripping position, by the way. Way. We all are, I would imagine. Yes. Are you close with Aurelia? She was my mentor. Is that right? Yes. Right. That's correct. We had spoken about you before. Very briefly. Good things, I hope. Oh, she had an area. Uh... Nothing poor to say about you. I'm interested, though. Have you kept in touch? Kept in contact? All these years. As much as I would like to. You know how these things are, you drift apart a little. Indeed, with the ages comes distance, unfortunately. And forgive me, I know that it is rude to imply a lady's age. But you were, you are still quite young, I imagine. The novices called her old lady, sir, say so. Comparatively speaking, I suppose. How old are you, Luna? I don't need to know that. Or Aurelia told me precious little about your magical capabilities. Forgive me, I did get a get. I do keep my uh, my eye on the magical events, particularly those that are magically inclined, especially on a particular mm, celestial event. I understand you were born under a uh, strange circumstance. Oh, I always, for I always forget. I never really bought into that superstition. Cersei, so, so give me, give me intelligence awareness. Okay. Why does he keep have to, having to up the icky? That like icky factor every single time, and why do you play him so well, Ramos? I know. Intelligence is okay. Isn't you were it? muted when you said that, by the way. It's okay. No, you no, it's not. I want to know what you said, Ramos. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. There's a tense, uh, uh, almost as if he's done this before. Uh, you know uh, of, of Stragobor's, uh, we'll call it interest in the uh, the Curse of the Black Sun. Mm -hmm. Aurelia warned you about this, uh, likely when he was more active in the community. Uh, he's likely had to defend his, his case before or mm, shrug off things like this before. He says, superstitions are what history is made of, Miss Evelyn. You'll understand when you, should you, find yourself 
in Aurelianize age group. Yes, well, I intend to live as long as I can, so here's hoping. Indeed. Were you... You've kept in touch with Aurelia. Are you still finding yourself close after all these years? Say so. This entire conversation, they've made it three feet. I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know, Miss Aveline. I've been gone out of public eye for some time. Should have stayed there. But I still have many connections that you might make use of. The tragedy would happen in Vizima. That's why you simply must forgive my outburst at dinner. I had friends in the city. Of course. And I likely have friends that will continue to die in these coming days, these wars, these battles. A tragedy of Vizima. Cersei would just swallow and keep walking. Still, there's no reason a silver lining can't be had. After all, brought you home to these very halls. That I am. And through some stroke of luck or consequence, while well, I am here as well. A happy accident. I'd like to offer you my resources, Miss Aveline. Or. Well, judging from what Istrid was saying about your particular shop, you were well known in the region. I am looking for investments always. As you know, it is rare gifts amongst our kind. Mages very rarely tend to offer something without exchange. Instead, I'd like to offer you a business partnership. Have you given any thought into where you might resettle? As of yet, no. Fortunately. Well, when you do... I'd like to offer you my resources. Your shop will be fully funded. We'll find you a lovely location. Wherever you would like. How generous. I appreciate that. No, dear. Generosity is not in our nature. I, of course, will... be a business partner. Mm-hmm. But I would hate to see... a lone sorceress... In wartime, there's no telling what might happen. Even if she keeps a witcher for a bodyguard. Well, having a witcher as a friend, regardless, they are troubling times. I hope you'll take me up on the offer, Miss Aveline. By all means, take time to think. If you were taught by Aurelia, I'm sure she taught you not to jump at every opportunity, but to rather assess things. Of course. I will give it much thought. I'm happy to hear it. No doubt, during the dinner conversation, Margarita expressed some distrust of me. 
I'd like to assure you, Miss Aveline. I'm not your enemy. Nor am I an enemy of Aratusa. I simply... It has been said that I care too much. Not the worst flaw. Who knows? You've gone through teachings at Aratusa. You've struck out on your own. Should you find need, perhaps I could teach you some things you don't know yet. Another offer I'd have to consider. And I hope you do. Is now, Cersei, that you see your room in view down the hall, feet away. He slows down. It is my belief that knowledge must be passed on to those that are willing, those that are ready. Aurelia and I are not so different. You'll find my teachings quite enjoyable, should you wish to take up the offer. Well, I don't doubt it. Good evening, Miss Aveline. Have Thank you for taking day. the time to walk with me. Anytime. He leans down and takes your hand and kisses just above the breadth of your fingers, releases your hand, and departs. Wash that arm. Yeah, yeah. Cersei will enter her room. Just close the door. Stand there for a second, holding the doorknob. Walk over to the side of the bed. And just flop down on it, sitting. Just, oh my god. I thought you were going to say ew for a second. Ugh. Yep, she's she's just trying to make sense of what the fuck just happened. Decompressing a little bit. Yes. Indeed. With that, we are gonna take this moment to take our brief intermission, and we will see you all very, very shortly. Welcome back. We are picking up exactly where we left off. Our camera pans from Sir Save, though, over to Ingrid. You have, I am Ingrid. You have been crying, Ingrid. And Istred Quite is heavily. there to console you. Perhaps now you are finding yourself available for conversation. Oh yeah, I would assume after a couple of minutes she's finally let out the bulk of the tears and the and everything else. This was letting the floodgates loose. <clears throat> so she's probably just sitting there taking in shallow breaths and now looking at her um, burnt, discolored, and mm, crispy arms and hands <clears throat> I'm so sorry oh my god okay um and she's just gonna say even with all that it still wouldn't have been enough to destroy him how can I how can any of us 
truly stand against that power. Ingrid, I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. I wish I could help you. I wish I could... offer you answers, but it's going to be okay. Things are... You can't accomplish your goals like this. I need more power. We need to get you to someone who can heal you. She's looking down at her arm. She's letting the pain... She's letting herself feel the pain... course through her. And just... Please. Let me help you. Very well. She'll stand up on her own in that moment as best as she can, still kind of looking at trying to flex her, her fingers all the while, knowing that the pain that she's feeling in that moment is nothing compared to the pain that Renwick's wrecked across the world in various ways at this point. And all the pain that others have suffered around her. And it's not enough. And she'll just look to him, look to Istrid, and say, You're right, I can I cannot I cannot do anything right in this condition. Where uh she's still kind of mentally she's there for conversation, but she's still kind of mentally like scattered brained a little bit on the subject. Um well, where can we go? Uh, unfortunately, I can't. I, I'm, I'm not skilled enough a healer to, to help you. Can Cersei handle this? Or we can go to Sabrina or Margarita. Hearing Cersei's name, she'll remember the time that she healed her uh, during the werewolf attack. And she'll just nod her head a few times and she'll say, I trust Cersei. She has the skills. And thank you, Istrid, for um, putting me out. She's going to hold her arms up. I um, may have lost a little bit of myself there, back there. Uh, tell me, have you ever seen based off against a higher vampire I'm afraid not no I I tend to be uh, of little use in combat I have very limited capabilities and the capabilities I do have can be destructive to everyone around me so it's um, no no, I, I tend to tend to avoid fighting if I can. That is very wise in its own way. I have a particular higher vampire that I cannot shake. That has haunted me for over 30 years now consistently my dreams my waking moments I he took something from me many years ago he's taken from many before and many since but I find it my responsibility to take him down and when we faced him in Vizima, I felt so helpless. I felt useless. Like the 30 years of training that I had done to face him meant nothing. And that I was nothing. And the only thing that I could think to do 
was to save the only two people that I still cared about. That still cared about me in that moment. I wanted them to live in that moment more than I wanted my revenge. And while I know it was the right decision, I can't help but think that we could have done more, that I could have done more. And she's in that moment, she's going to say, let me tell you, um, would you walk with me to Cersei's room? course there we go now we got our own garden walk going on <laughs> um and as they walk ingrid is going to tell istrid everything that's happened up to this point except not going to mention elodie uh I think Elodie would be the only one because she doesn't want Elodie's existence to be wide no widely known. I'm trying to think of what Ingrid would know not to talk about. Probably not the crazy ass book that uh, Cersei has. Because that's powerful shit. She's probably going to mention that they're uh, uh, about the higher vampire that was trying to open that portal but not the book itself other than that yeah and she's going to give istrid the lowdown on everything that happened with renwick including the fall of the bear witcher school the killing of her um and the killing of her uh lover Uh, Ingrid, I want you to make a roll here of empathy and either charisma, persuasion, or performance. I'll do charisma. Two and charisma. An okay, char I'm an okay charismatic. Oh. I'm charismatically okay. There we go. That's what. <laughs> Eighteen. Eighteen. He listens intently. At the end of your tale, he says, I'm very sorry for everything, Ingrid. I'm not unfamiliar with strife. Seems you've had more than a lifetime's worth already. Mm. I he hesitates. And you feel a familiar push against your mind, Ingrid, as telepathy is connected to the two of you. I understand that witchers are capable of adapting. I've seen it and I've been doing some research. I don't think that you are not enough for the tasks you set out to complete. But I have some things that might help, should you need them. I don't think... I don't think Ingrid's ever responded telepathic. No, have I, have I responded telepathically before? I believe you have. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll know. I'll, I'll know. Because I was going to have her to just, like, start speaking normally. Um... 
but she'll she'll look to him curiously, especially curious in the fact that he's speaking this way to her and not openly vocal. And she's just going to mentally respond. What sort of things do you have? Also, why can't we speak normally? You're right here. He walks with you in silence, but telepathically you hear they're mutagens. They are extract, extracted from creatures, uh, brought in by monster hunters. You're not the first witcher I've dealt with, and I got curious. I don't want Aratuza any prying and curious ears to think that I'm overstepping my bounds. She stops dead in her tracks. She turns to Istrid with a wide-eyed expression and says, do you, do you know how to create mutagens? And shakes his head. And you hear it in your head. They're just the sources for monsters. You'll need a far more skilled hand than I to put them to better use. But what I do what have... What can you do offer... with this? Do you know of somebody that could help me make something of this? And from her bag, she is going to pull out the preserved the higher vampire heart that she has. He looks at the heart. If there is a mutagen to be had from it, I will find it. And he holds out his hand. She hands him over, hands over the heart to him. I'm trusting you with this. I need to become more powerful. I need to become stronger. At whatever the cost. I am willing to pay. Consider this a favor among friends. Ingrid is going to nod and then, as is her way, hug him. And then forget that, forgetting that her arms are severely burnt. And then she's just going to go, ow, mid hug. He, uh, when you pull away, he, he keeps the heart to his side. He doesn't, he's tender with it that heart came from the higher vampire that was attempting the summoning of the wild hunt and then we'll see what we can warrant from it I appreciate it greatly thank you You make your way, you garden walk, <laughs> your, uh, your way at the end of your story and at the end of this exchange you are down the hall from Cersei's room and at the end of it you can see a figure cloaked in heavy robes and a pensive expression on his face turn swiftly to see the two of you at the other end of the hall. Stregapur is watching. She waves her crispy arm at him. He speaks and says, I was understanding that you were retiring for the evening, Istrid. He says, Istrid speaks and says, 
Small change of plans found myself unable to sleep. Stragovor. A botched sparring match. Strid speaks up and says something like that. I, I if you I, I was sparring against a wooden pillar. The pillar is no more, but uh I um, seem to have overexerted myself a little bit. I can see that. He looks between you and Esther and then speaks and says, It's interesting to see that you're the only one, the only witcher I've known to do such a thing. I wonder what that says about you. Only Witcher to overexert themselves, maybe in your own presence, but I've seen similar things happen in training. I'm pretty sure uh, you have people overexerting yourself here, too. It's not much different. Hmm. Well, you'll find a common factor. Those that exert themselves here, and yourself, Madam Witcher. Good evening. Does he come within like? Does he come in within like touching distance of me? Uh, no. As you guys are walking toward the okay. uh, toward Cersei's room, he is at the other end of the hall and is now going down the other corner. So you're telling me I can't do what I actually wanted to do was give him a little pat pack on the cheek with my uh, crispy hand. <laughs> Gross. Unfortunately, you, you do not have the opportunity now. Shame. Is he is he leaving now? Is he gone? He's down the other hole, yeah. I do not know how you put up with that man. He is a... Hmm. What is the word I'm looking for? Misogynist. Misogynist. Bigot. Terrible. A bastard. That's, that's <laughs> apt. Very apt. Yes. I, I, I feel like there are several strong words that could be said about that man. Um, bastard is a good I summary. I still wish to punch him, but right now is probably not the best of times. Another Another day, then. Yes. Thank you. Or Happy. walking with me, and of course she eyes the, uh, the the tucked away fire vampire heart. I trust you with that. It was my pleasure indeed, Ingrid. And I'll do what I can as soon as I can. Thank you. Are you? Have a good evening, Ingrid. And she's going to attempt to reach out and touch his shoulder, but then realize that, you know, she's kind of crispy right now and not want to do that to him. And then she's just going to say, seriously, thank you for being there in my time of need. It meant, the, it meant a lot. I'm not great at words at the best of times, but thank you. I have experience with words, but I hope that you can believe me when I say that it was an absolute pleasure to walk with you, to speak with you, and to get to know you more. Ingrid blushes very, very, very slightly and just nods a few times and then says, okay, I, I, I should uh, let Cersei know that I'm here and not just be a creep at her door. And then she's going to turn towards the door, reach up a hand to, to knock, and then realize that might hurt a little too much, so she knocks with her forehead. Uh, Cersei, you've heard muffled uh, conversation outside your door up to this point, and then suddenly a very mm, a muffled thud, as it doesn't have the bone structure of a, of a, of a knuckle knock. 
<laughs> you telling me this is that's how not bony your forehead? <laughs> how bony <laughs> your forehead? <laughs> uh, Cersei will get up from her from what she from for her from the bed and open the door. You see Ingrid, uh, as well hey. as Istrid standing off to the side, ready to depart. Uh, he he hello, uh, Cersei. Um, I seem to oh, have. Um, I had an accident during my training. Um, I overexerted myself a little bit, and I seem to have caught on fire. Okay, come here. <laughs> that was such a wine mom answer. Istrid is standing again off to the side. Um. <laughs> He's not saying anything. He's just... She said that you you would be able to fix this. If, if, if... I'm not... Would you like me to... I can... If it's too much trouble, I can speak with Margarita. I just... I'm unable to... Help. Um, I should do... be able to... I can do what I can. Actually, out of uh, curiosity, that brings me, you know, I understand that, you know, sorceresses and mages, they have their specialties, but did you, did, is this a, a, did you learn here or another school? Do they not teach you healing? I think I'll leave Miss Aveline <laughs> to uh, explain the differences between our skill levels, if that's all right with you, Miss Aveline. Have a lovely night, Istrid. Thank you. And you as well. Thank you, Istrid. He departs. Cersei will close, Cersei will close the door. That, okay. that, that man is very sweet. Hmm. Yeah. Don't I know it. Sit down. Uh, she will sit down wherever she has... Uh, Wherever Cersei tell, like shows her where to sit down. Two chairs in front of the, the fireplace, I imagine. Mm. Very apt. She will sit down and like hold her arms out. And while she's doing that, she'll say, He's very interesting. Insisted on speaking to me uh, through the brain, like you do to me sometimes. Um, instead of speaking aloud. And he offered me mutagens to become stronger. And I gave him our higher vampire heart because he might be able to make a mutagen out of that. He knows most things. I did not tell him about Elodie, though. I, I'm, I've been good about that. Well, thank you. Istrid is... Um, he's very kind. Insight check. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm the way the way you physically said kind. It's keying off in my brain that something ain't right, and if it's keying off in my brain like that, it would definitely key off in Ingrid's. And what I'm gonna say right now is, yeah, I want to see if there's more to what Cersei's saying right now. Uh, human perception, Cersei. You can choose to not roll, or you can choose to kind of convey your words however you'd like or deceive and kind of keep oh, that things explodes. closer to your chest. Uh, 17, 18, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, I'll just do... 27. Oh, dear. Um, charisma. Okay. To try and just be like, to leave the conversation there. She's very... Complicated feelings about his dream. Understood. Empathy, charisma, please. Did he flirt with you too? Oh damn. That's ass. That's not a twenty-seven. What is the number total? Uh, five plus B. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, Ingrid, what is uh? Or, sorry, thirteen compared to twenty-seven. Cersei. What does Ingrid see in this moment? Cersei is sitting is sitting down 
as Ingrid's talking about what happened uh, within the last 30 minutes, and she definitely saw a pause and like a uh, trying not to make Ingrid feel bad. <laughs> Realizing this is not Ingrid's forte <laughs> and that she might be in a den of lions. <laughs> um, Ingrid is just going to fur her brow a little bit and then frown and tilt her head and she's like, did I did I did I do something wrong? Did I No. No 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 no. Istrid is just well Was I duped? <laughs> no. Istrid is not that kind of gentleman. He's just very kind. He can be kind to a fault. However, I know I know through the grapevine who he pines after. I I feel like there is, uh, what did they say? There's a lot of tea to be had with this conversation. Um. Okay, okay, don't give me that look. I feel like that would actually be a legitimately, a legitimate phrase, okay? Like, everybody, ha everybody has those tea cup moments, you know what I mean? Whatever you say, Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly fair, I'm a millennial that was influenced a lot by Gen Z. <laughs> I think at this point I would start healing. So that's with my focus. Good. <laughs> Excellent. You love so, to see it. Uh, I only expend two stamina. Um Three points of damage per round for 1d10 rounds. Or it could be oh, it, or it could be uh, casted repeatedly to heal a critical wound, which is I don't think this is critical. Not a critical I have wound. 12 I have 12 points of damage that I took. Okay. Do you want me to roll and then just do math? Yes, please. Okay. I can do that. Oh my god, you're going to dice jail. Oh no. I'm gonna cast it again. How many how many dice are in your dice jail now? Uh, I don't wanna talk about it. You're gonna run out of dice. The dice penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna cast it again after she probably It just didn't work out the first time, whatever. Okay, I exploded. Or no, it doesn't explode. Does it explode? Uh, uh ten's always explode. Okay, that's 15 rounds of two points of healing. Excellent. Uh, the dice dungeon, sorry. So one of the, within a matter of seconds, Ingrid, you are healed. Your skin is no longer melted and it sort of recedes back from that blackened state on your fingertips. The skin returns to a almost, uh, well, I'll leave this to you, Cersei. Take some of the flavor to this magic. Is this returning it to its natural state? Or is this going to be like baby soft new skin? Ooh. Are we talking? Oh my god. It's like it's it, it's like Deadpool. No. No. <laughs> um, honestly, I think it would. I'm trying to think. I don't. It's not. It's never specified in the witcher that i know of so yeah i would say it'd be like new new skin mm -hmm. so it's very soft as if it's been freshly moisturized it's uh the calluses along your your fingers are faded uh the knuckles the scars i worked are, hard for those <laughs> the scars are are blurred and and healed almost as well now I understand why you sorceresses do not seem to age. This is... No. This That's is not why, but... What? Why? Now I'm curious. Why? 
<laughs> Tell me why. Tell me how it works exactly. Well, uh, what do you want to hear first? Um, my ADHD. Um, <laughs> um, uh, wow. This is such a big moment to be looking at Luna's expression and have <laughs> fucking executive dysfunction happen immediately. Um, first of all, um, thank you, Cersei, and she's going to hug you. And, um, and then she's going to say, um, before any of that, I, I know I need to get, I need to get stronger. I can't. Uh, Istrid caught me in a weak moment. I was hoping to be alone in the training room. It was good and empty, so I let everything out, so to speak. And, well, you saw the, I guess it is a good thing that he was there, but, because uh, I was quite literally on fire. Um, and I didn't notice it in the immediate instant, but, um, just made me realize how much I had been holding in and I cannot be weak like that again I cannot be weak enough to let Renwick get away again I cannot be weak enough to let him hurt Nyoka, again, to hurt you, to hurt anyone. It has been a long night. Not to mention Stregobor drains me. That man is like a siphon on fun, on joy, on laughter. He is awful. Why is he allowed here still? Can we kill him? No. Hmm. Seems like that would be the easiest way, but I understand. So how 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 do you not age? Because I know how witchers we I know how we slow our aging through mutagens and the like. Through the trial of grasses makes us uh, age at a rapidly slower rate. How does it work for you? Tyler, could you please refresh me? It is an incredibly um, <clears throat> painful and excruciating process. I'd say sort of ritual uh, yeah, it's a sort of ritual. It's, it's excruciating, it's painful, it's like a rite of passage. Um, it's strange magic. Is, is the best simplification that I can give you. Well, it's hard to explain. Um, we, when we become of age, when we graduate, we all undergo a a transformation through ritual. It's not pleasant, to say the he least. Pokes your cheek. Not an illusion. Well, I have hugged you several times before. I didn't always look like this. What did you look like before? <laughs> Give us that lore, Luna. Uh, I'm a oh, sucker for lore drops. Let's go. Oh, it was so long ago. How I long ago? Remember. 
Um, you know my age. I am 59. Actually, I'm going to be 60 soon. You, 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 the words did not come if you said anything, Luna. Oh, good to know. Um. Oh, I didn't. My eyes were a different color. My hair was different. I'm a little taller. Hmm. She tilts her head <laughs> a little taller, you say. How 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 tall is Cersei naturally? You did not words did not come out. Oh, I forgot. Um Um five six, call it. Five foot six? Five five. Okay, okay. Interesting. So, yeah, Ingrid is going to... I, you are shorter than this. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I could not imagine you anything than what you are. Um, oh, one, a, a couple of the, um, um, the uh, little ones. Uh, what, do you, what do you call them again? Novices? Novices. Uh, mentioned... Um, an, an old lady, Cersei, uh, being Aurelia's older apprentice. Um, how old are you? I, I pegged you for, like, you know, well, I mean, you know, obviously you're a sorceress, so, you know, the aging thing I already knew about, because otherwise, you know, I've known you since Sintra. She's rambling at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am actually quite young amongst my peers. It's not a point of pride. Interesting. So I was good to reprimand them from call for calling you old. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they were the, the, the sweetest things. Um, I, I will admit I, uh, I gave them a little bit of encouragement. Um, they had so many questions for me as a witcher, and I had to, you know, I, why not share what I know, what I can share? Obviously not to the, um, you know, giving away secrets. I cannot do that anymore. Um, I shouldn't be doing that anymore. Nyoka would kill me, literally. He literally would. Do not tell him <laughs> anything. To the grave. Um, but I did tell them, uh, after everything I saw Sabrina them through uh which also influenced my conversation at the table um i wanted to make sure that they knew that they should always follow their heart and i'm trying to remember exactly what i said um try not to let others decide for them what they wish of their lives and to find power within themselves. Something along those lines. I cannot remember the exact words, but they seemed encouraged by it. And out of character, I'm going to say, it involved a freaking random-ass role that I still don't know what the fuck that's for. That's giving me stress panics every single time I think about it. <laughs> Both a dangerous and a futile thing to tell a mage. Futile? You see, do you do you not have your freedoms? Oh, I do. But I wouldn't be where I am without discipline. Discipline, uh, yes. Um, enslavement, no. Um, no, that's what Nilfgaard does. Uh, yes, another reason to utterly hate Nilfgaard. Yes, we'll we'll add that to the list of immense. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's gonna say, but 
I I have to I have to ask was were things as rough for you here? I would say they were worse. Worse? I was already comparing them to being worse than the bear school as they currently stand. How I could not even imagine them being worse. I lived. How are you? <laughs> wow, that's some serious things to unpack right there. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I lived through the trial of the grasses and I lived through what the bear school put me through. That doesn't necessarily make it right. I think we've already established at this point that groups and organizations just because things have been as they have been for so long and even if they do have good that comes from it here and there does not necessitate a correct method the results speak for themselves Just so much to unpack with this. Ingrid is so confused right now. Uh, <laughs> but she's going to say, I can understand where you're coming from with that, because I I guess in that essence I wouldn't be who I am right now. But if we give credence to those small traumas that shaped us, even in the name of discipline, then we also must give credence to the bigger ones as well. I wouldn't be who I am today and here if it wasn't for what Renwick did to me so long ago, but that does not make it a right thing. No. No, I don't think anyone would argue that it does. Well, some people probably would. They're wrong. Ingrid is going to, Ingrid's looking at you with a little bit of a, a different light. Um, I would say more starting to see the actual person behind the sorceress a little bit more. And how you've explained some of the way things function, how she's seen the way things function. She's picturing you back then in this setting doing these things learning this stuff and she's going to now with her baby soft hands <laughs> she's going to uh kneel in front of you she's going to cup your face and she's going to say she's going to look into you in the eyes and she's like serious she's going to look at you she's going to say Are you okay? Oh. It's a loaded question. I think it's a very straightforward question. There's a lot you could answer to that, yes, but I guess I should ask. As you're trying to think of how to phrase this, um, I apologize. <laughs> um, with everything that has happened, not just Vizima, but what you have come here to find as well, are you okay? Being home is the best thing that's happened for me since Elodie left. It's not without its stresses, but it's certainly reprieve. That is good. 
I am glad that we could bring you here after everything. Then I only regret that Stregobor had to be here at the same time. And I think that everybody is saying that. Ill fortune. Just. What can you do? If Nyoka was here, I believe his response would be to um, silence him forever. And we could have done that quietly. I don't know but... what Nyoka would have done here. <laughs> I'm afraid to find out. I always like to think he is always with us, watching. Yeah. She looks up to the rafters. <laughs> Outside the window. Outside the window. Give me an awareness roll. Oh my god! That was real ominous. <laughs> Eighteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Your room is positioned in such a way that you can see the uh, the bridge to Aratusa. Something is coming. What is a caravan of sorts coming with lanterns? It's making its way across the bridge. Is this a, is one of those windows that opens up? I would certainly think so. Cersei, you tell me. Yeah. It's your room. Yeah, it would open out. Is there a... Is this a it, actually, is this a balcony window? Or is this just a window window? Luna, this is your room. Ah, uh, um, yeah, sure. All the quarters have little tiny balconies. Ingrid opens up the balcony window and goes outside and leans over and looks as closely as she can to see what, what the fuck's coming. She's trying to see. It is a caravan of three wagons. Do they look familiar in any sort of way? Difficult to tell from this, uh, from this distance. She's going to look to Cersei. Were we expecting company? I know that our merchant friends said that they would stop by. Does it look like them? Again, difficult to tell from this distance. You guys are high up and far off. No, Hold on. Like... I gotta have something witchery about this I can do. I gotta have some witcher nonsense. I could scry. <laughs> you oh, could I scry. Resources. Ugh. What do you need? I mean, I think I have everything. Well, we never dis discussed or decided if uh, rituals eat the resources. They don't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't... Uh... <laughs> appear that they do um i have nothing in the book that says that they do what excellent so i just have to not lose my bag got it get you that bag um <laughs> it's almost like nyoka is with us all along he's <laughs> assassin's greeting from a fucking raptor uh, I guess. Well, by the time they, by the time I'm doing hydromancy, they'll probably like be at the gates, so it doesn't really matter. Well, they're they're on the bridge. It's, it's three caravans. They're not like. It doesn't appear that they're storming the castle, as it were. You may do so if you wish. It's entirely up to you. Would you Would you like to like even if they were to be here by the time by the time you finish scrying it would be best to know ahead of time still the longer you discuss this the closer they get oh my uh, god <laughs> yeah i'll i'll scry on i forget his name Thaland. Thaland. i am lorekeeper with hydromancy excellent uh, I believe you... I don't believe there's a rule for this. I think you just do this. Mm-hmm. Excellent. 
do it to it. You see Thaland uh, alone on a wagon traveling. There's a lantern above his head. He seems to be intoxicated, not highly so. He was traveling on cobblestone, bumping with every uh, with every little every little imperfection of this of this pavement. All right, I'm gonna spin my little orb around. <laughs> Am I, are we on a bridge? And are panning panning at yeah, Luna? We're pan. Uh, it is. That's a that's Fallon. a deep joke. You can uh, assess the situation. Give me an awareness roll. Ah. That was a deep cut, by the way. <laughs> for those not in the know Luna didn't understand what panning was for a second when we were telling her to pan the camera in cyberpunk 19. to see something 19 <clears throat> yeah so in the situation you can tell that that is the bridge to Artusa I'll lift my head up from the water oh okay we're fine is it is it Fallon yes Oh, good. Oh, good. Good? Is he good? It's late. Uh, why is he coming so late? Is he in good spirits, at least? He's intoxicated. Oh, good spirits in a different way, but yes. Okay. <laughs> Ingrid. Uh, yes. Something I wanted to ask you. Oh, of course. Anything. What do you need? Sarsu will kind of be looking out the window when she says this. When we were talking about... We were telling stories. And you mentioned the person who gave you the contract. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, fuck, what was that guy's name? God damn it. I already forgot. Storyteller? Pulling it up in notes. Thank you. Please continue. <clears throat> when you mentioned him, I think I know him. Interesting. But, but under a different name. I was... Fate really does work interestingly. I was kind of remissed for a bit that um, what I had found was just another noble, but you have connection to him. How so? Am I? What am I seeing when I look at Cersei as she's... Cersei's looking out the window... Um, oh, she's distant. <laughs> yes. She's thousand yards staring right now. Not necessarily. But, and she'll um, turn around and say, um, my parents... We should probably warn Margarita that a drunk dwarf is coming to her doorstep. Okay, we will put a pin in this conversation, but a bear never forgets. We will is come th back for... Is that so? Is that true? I believe so. Uh, oh. I, my my, 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 my uh, teacher told me that once before, and it sounded correct, so it... it, 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 it it's a steel trap up here. Uh-huh. Zootopia okay. reference. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? But yes, let's revisit. She's gonna place a place her baby soft hand on your shoulder, and she's gonna say, "We will revisit this." Um, for your knowledge, the reason he was even at my home in Sintra was because he was the one that I was hired to protect from the werewolf. 
course he was. Uh, yes, uh, actually, it is. Uh, it was a request that I do that from uh, Calante uh, herself. Um, yeah, he was he he was some big shot, a big wig, in her court he there in so Sintra. That is all correct information, right, Ramos? Because I'm going based off my notes. Correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> he was so close. Interesting. Ingrid's gonna hug you. You look like you need a hug right now. She, um... She'll, like, lightly return it. Because she's thinking. Now she's dark thousand yard stare. I can see that this is a lot just like what I unleashed earlier. I feel like you have some own power to unleash within you, if you will. I don't, I'm not good at this, I'm trying. Um, whatever you need, I am here. And if you need to unleash some inner fury. I can show you how. I can help you channel that. I will keep that in mind. Now, shall we go see to the drunken dwarf? We shall. You do this. It's a... It's a strange interaction. He's here to sell things. Unaware of the hour, it seems. Margarita allows him to stay hmm, in guest quarters. Away from the students, away from the school proper, as it were. Think a guest house situation. Mm. I imagine I I didn't why is he here so early so late not early late I mean I guess it could be early can if, if you considered the time uh it depends uh. <laughs> but your evening does eventually come to a close You sleep. You rest. Soundly? As soundly as can be done. The next morning comes. Given the time you've taken, you may roll recovery, take a look at your recovery stat, and recover your Stamina and uh, take time to heal if you wish. How much points did Cersei heal me for? You should be at full. Everything. Okay, cool. Bitchin'. Look at that. 45. Back to 45 HP. Now I need to roll recovery. Where is that? Cersei, um, rather than waste this for the time being, uh, you had 15 rounds of two points of healing. Um, yes. So rather than. Rather than just let the this will be a rare occasion, so don't don't get too used to this. Um, if you are missing healing, if you are missing any hit points, you will take them from the expend the the leftovers of your healing on Ingrid. Wow! You healed me so hard. You healed yourself a little bit. In the future. <laughs> wow! Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so wild magic is cool you can take a look at your recovery set recover your stamina uh, you may recover you. your uh, your resolve as well my resolve is now at 20 out of 40 42 out of 50 oh wow you didn't really take that much resolve damage did you I got ignored once. <laughs> we, uh, By Stregobor. 
We crest into a strange time, ladies. Tasks must be completed. There is... There are things to do. But you have been invited to stay as long as you like. So, how long do you intend to stay? Depends. What do we want to go do? Well, I can only speak for Ingrid, in a sense, but a lot of the desire to come here was, A, because she knew that you had business to resolve here, people that you knew. Um, this seemed like the safest place to recover, to regroup, and to actually figure out a plan of action. So I think what we need to do, this is, at mo this is mostly as we're talking, of course, uh, what I think we need to do is we need to sit down in a situation where Ingrid is not separated because of uh, sorcer sorceress cult stuff um, and actually hash out some sort of plan of action for what we're going to do. Because we have to think about Nilfgaard now. We have to think about Renwick now. We have the bonus of being, a of being able to... Um, of being able to have the contra the the general contract out for Renwick and his men, but we still need to figure out how we want to approach this at all. We need more allies. Yeah, a conversation, a battle, a battle, con a battle plan conversation is 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 need to happen. I think Thirsty is very interested in following this lead on Cadfan, even though. Umuna is afraid. Ooh, that makes it even better. You gotta follow the fear, Luna. You gotta embrace it. It makes great storytelling. What if he eats me? What was that? So, we have, uh, like I said, a many, great many deals and threads to pull on. But I'm curious again, how long do you take it, Artuza? You may spend however long you'd like here, really. It's just a matter that the world is still outside and moving. Are you trying to kick us out of Artuza? Not at all. <laughs> well, I definitely want to. I definitely want to do that lesson or whatever, whatever I really wanted to do. Lesson catch up. Um, I want to go get more clothes. And I def. I think Cersei is re pretty scared. And would want to take at least a week. That gives me chance. That gives me time enough to do what I just remembered that we want to do. Thank you, brain, for making me forget something that happened like a few minutes ago. Um, mutagens with Istrid, uh, dealing with that situation. I want to see what's going to come of that. The mutagens he already has, um, and go from there. Uh, I want to practice more magic. I want to. I want to. I want to boost my signs up as much as much as I can. So honestly, like staying a week at the very least works. It's entirely up to you guys. And again, <clears throat> just asking. Currently, um, to give you guys some time frame, it's about the second week of May, twelve seventy one. So you can stay for however many weeks you'd like. My birthday's in two weeks. Well, maybe honestly, we need to. Cersei needs to train. Spend my XP. Um. Oh my God, maybe teach what? us both. Or maybe Aurelia can teach us both stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe that maybe two or three at the most. I do need a solid number, ladies. I'm I apologize. So sorry. No, why, I'm do so need a, why do you need it? Why do you need a salt? Why do you need a solid number on roleplay, Ramos? Why do you need a, Why do you need to limit our fun? Well, for no, your I'm... training purposes, for mechanical purposes, for one. Oh, that's um, true. It does take. Oh shit. Let's spend two weeks here. That's going to give us time to do 
uh, all the training that we want, all the uh, role play dialogues that we want, all the shopping that we want to do, we've got to have our cart restocked because I assume, like, or at least stocked up even fuller than what we have it right now. Uh, if we're going to take it back on the road, which I think is probably going to be the best bet to do. We don't want to stay in one place for too, too long, especially with Renwick's. We're safe here, I feel, with a lot of the protections that are here. But you never fucking know. What if this dude has fucking spies here, too? We're so paranoid. <laughs> with reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two weeks sounds good. Yeah. Two weeks, then. Two weeks. You remain in R2 for two weeks. You train. You take the time to learn. You practice your skills. You gain new insight into what mutagens can be extracted from different creatures. But all of these things will be explored next week. On Witcher Ways of Old. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you guys for playing. Next week, we'll run down uh, those two weeks. We'll discuss uh, what you guys accomplish. We'll discuss, we'll have any uh, brief role play moments, anything that you guys wish to do during the two weeks. Uh, Istred will still be there for at least two more weeks. Stregobor will be there for at least another week. Um, we're going to have a whole week without Stregobor there? Wow. It's Maybe. Like a party. <laughs> <laughs> we could kill him and have him two weeks without Stregobor there. So, uh, be thinking about what you guys want to accomplish in those two weeks and take a look at the book for training purposes and for uh, for being taught things. Mm -hmm. uh, however, that's where we're going to sign off for today. Thank you guys so much for playing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you uh, for running it. Always a pleasure. It. Um, we, of course, in the Rolling Nomads, but before I get into any spiel of my own, let's go ahead and take a look at our lovely players. Cersei. Hey, I'm Luna, or Druid by Night. I stream at Druid by Night, and I'm also on Twitter, TikTok, and Blue Sky, I guess. And I stream on Twitch, by the way, in case I was... Anyway, um, yeah, I've been Cersei. I'm in the club now, and I'm very scared, but that's okay. I don't see why. Ingrid. I honestly don't see why either. This is really fucking cool. Hi, everybody. I'm the Azure Butterfly, or Azure for short, or simply Rachel. Bay Butterfly on the internet. You can find me over at theazurebutterfly.ttv, uh, where... Uh, I stream story role-playing games, playing Boulder's Gate 3 right now. Uh, Going to be getting into cyberpunk content off and on up to the DLC release. Uh, on Thursdays, you can find me here on the Rolling Nomads as well, playing my little Azure's Horror Corner, where I play a lot of the horror games that I've been hoarding over the past while. Hoarded horror. I like that. Actually, that's... Yeah, that's fuck, that's a good another title for that. Anyway... <laughs> That's me. I play Ingrid. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I'm also on the social medias. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> um, <clears throat> both of their Twitch is in the chat. And of course, uh, I have been your game master for tonight, Gilbert Ramos. Found everywhere at Ramos the Nomad. That's TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, all of the social media things. Uh, we, of course, have been the Rolling Nomads. You can take a look at our schedule right here on twitch.tv slash Rolling Nomads. Everything is up to date. And finally... Uh, laid out for your for your witnessing and your viewing pleasure um we will be returning tomorrow for baldur's gate i'm doing some baldur's gate uh i have finally made it on the precipice into act two um heck yeah because i'm slow and must turn over every rock and raid every pouch and raid every crate Guaranteed you missed something because I thought I was doing the same thing and I fucking missed like two big things apparently. There's like, no the way in hell I didn't I didn't there's no way. I'm I there's no way I there's no fucking way. I didn't miss a goddamn thing. There's no way. I bet you will find out something you missed when you get to act three. Impossible. Um, I'll bet twenty bucks on that. I'll put money on it. 
I'm, I'm confident. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, we've of course been the Rolling Nomads again. Our Twitch is, our Twitch is updated with our schedule. Um, as well, you can find us on Sundays over at twitch.tv slash the Onyx Path, as well as this coming Friday. We'll be doing some character creation with these two lovely people and some of the writers of Titans Rising. Um, um, rough. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll be doing some, some character creation this Friday over on twitch.tv slash the Onyx Path, so we can get a three shot story started for the the release of titans rising uh that'd be great you can find us over on twitter at underscore ruling nomads that's the best way to keep up to date with us our late programming our start our late starts our new programming our uh going live announcements all that good stuff and uh you can find these episodes over on youtube youtube.com slash rolling nomads we're finally getting some organization and structure over here and the rolling nomads and things should be getting back on track with upload schedule very soon so that's us in a handbasket. We hope you hang out for the raid, and we will see you guys next Monday. Same time, same place, same heroes. We'll see you then. Bye!